What a great day, great venue, and joining us now, the Attorney General of the state of Mississippi, Lynn Fitch. Uh, so good to have you on today, General. Thanks for coming on. Hey, Dragart. Thanks for having me. It's great to be with you. Excited about your new show and oh. glad to be on today. Well, I and appreciate that. Thank we're you. getting to celebrate. This is a great opportunity for people to get together and honor our veterans and, like you said, raise dollars that are so needed to take care of them. I mean, you think about our, our veterans have done so much for us. Um, they put themselves out there, the men and women in service, uh, so that we could be sitting here right now. It's unbelievable. Enjoying freedoms. And, uh, we should never forget that, and we should always honor them. And mo most importantly, we got to take care of them. And that's what this event's all about: is making sure that we do take care of them uh, for their service. Absolutely. You know, they they put in early on, and they served all the way through, never asking any questions, and went for us uh, in every avenue that they could to protect us, to have those freedoms. And absolutely, we need to take care of them uh, in the different uh, homes and and keep them uh, having a fabulous quality of life that they so deserve. Absolutely the least we can do uh, in return for their service and their commitment to us and uh, the sacrifices they made so that, as you said, we can enjoy the quality and style of life we uh, cherish here in uh, Mississippi and, and in America. So I know it's been awfully busy in your office these days. <laughs> it seems like we read about stuff going on virtually every day uh, in uh, the news and national news. Of course, you've got this big case that is uh, going before the Supreme Court, the abortion case that everybody knows about now, referred to as the Mississippi case, I think, in a lot of the, uh, the media. Uh, what, what's the latest? What are you hearing? If there's any update you can share with us on that, I, I thought we might start that. I know that's a high priority for you. Absolutely, and thanks, Gerard, for talking about that because it is set for hearing in front of the United States Supreme Court on December the 1st. Okay. So we're excited that we've gotten a date set. We're looking forward to having the opportunity to talk about the platform, to talk about the, the nexus of our brief, uh, the magnitude of this case. You know, think about it, Gerard. This is the first time in 50 years there's been any discussion about Roe v. Wade. And so now we can actually have a very healthy dialogue on why that case and the others should be overturned. It's really key because, you know, you've, for 50 years you've had this um, bl blurry lines about when is uh, viability, yeah. uh, who should really be in charge, and you've got so many different federal uh, courts that have had a number of different decisions, again, making it a very blurry line for everyone involved. This allows us for the first time to go, wait a minute, 50 years, things have changed. Yeah. You know, women have changed, men have changed. Certainly our, our medical uh, technology has changed. Uh, the science has been so important. Um, and as you look forward in 50 years, the workplace has changed. Yeah. So it, it is really time to have that conversation. I'm very excited. I, I just was in front of the United States Supreme Court last week okay. for their first case that they had held in person since COVID started. Right. So we have kind of the groundwork, uh, what they will be expecting. They're not letting anyone in except for counsel. In the mm, press. Interesting. So, all right, so explain for the benefit of our audience what would happen should uh, your argument prevail? Should the case be be uh, ruled in your favor, in Mississippi's favor? What would happen? Well, you're, well your exact idea has become the Mississippi case, and it, but. It, it is a Mississippi case, but it will affect everyone across our country. Okay. And that's why I said this is a case of magnitude because when it, the ruling comes down, it will affect every state. Uh, certainly it will affect Mississippi and uphold the 15-week abortion ban. But for all the other states, and this is truly a rule of law case, th it should be returned to each respective state. Every state should be able to make their own rules. We certainly have ours. You may see some other very uh, liberal states have some very different rules than we do, different laws than we have. Um, but at the same time, it is a rule of law case, and it should be returned so that, you know, we elect our legislators. They are our voice. Our governors are the voice. So they, in fact, are the ones that should be making the ultimate decisions on behalf of all of us in each respective state. So I, I feel very good that they are going to do something because the United States Supreme Court uh, let this case sit for a number of months. And then when
when they um, allowed us to, to move forward, I mean, we've been on a pretty stringent schedule, you yeah. know, briefing schedule, the reply uh, brief from the other side, and so, and then find the reply from our side um, today. So we're ready, and we're getting ready for December the 1st. Well, from a legal perspective, uh, General, is it, isn't it fair to say that this is much a case about limiting federal power and about federalism and the Tenth Amendment itself? as much that as, as just the, the complex argument about human viability, which is, I think, at the core of this. Well, you're exactly right. So there's no constitutional right or text or um, constriction of how that plays out. Roe v. Wade just made that assumption, and then all these courts have operated for the last 50 years yeah. with their own interpretation. Yeah. So we didn't have anything, you know, very definitive to work from. Yeah. So again, as this comes down, it allows us in each state to make those determinations, determine what laws fit the needs of the people in their states. Um, and so that's why it's so key. And I feel like they're going to want to do something because, again, it has just been this blurry line out there. And our job is, you know, to, to protect life, uh, to protect the sanctity of life. Sure. But look at it from a holistic perspective. Uh, we have to empower and take care of the women. Yeah. We need to help them along the way, you know, not only um, during their pregnancy, after their pregnancy, but be supportive for the, the women and the child. And so this is the first time, again, we've had the discussion that we should be doing that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, but it just seems like that what's happened since then because of the advances in technology and medical technology uh, in particular uh, uh, during the pregnancy period, states have gone in opposite directions. I mean, the, the far left states have, have extended some of that way beyond, I mean, almost to the point where uh, they're trying to legalize uh, uh, abortion even after birth, I mean, uh, uh, after a uh, party. So uh, we, we've got to have some way that a, a state could, we could return to the foundational framework of, of the nation, which is allowing the states to have some purview there. And that's Seems like that's what's going on here. To the to the average non-legal person like me, I guess that's what it appears to be. No, you're absolutely correct. That's what we're we're asking is turn it back to the states. And again, you're going to see some very different laws in yeah. very different liberal states than what we have. You'll probably have some continue to go to the extremity. Yeah. But at the same time, we know we're doing the right thing, allowing it to come back to the states, really arguing the rule of law, uh, really talking about the protection of life. Uh, now, not only are we talking about the child, the mother, and then we're also arguing for the medical integrity. Yeah. I mean, the, the, this profession is so key to, to the women and to absolutely. these children as well. Abs absolutely. It, it totally is. Uh, General, it's hard to believe, but we got a new legislative session coming up here in a couple <laughs> of months. What are some of the priorities from the AG's office this year that you're working you're working with on the legislature? Well, we, we've got a number of different areas that we're looking into. There were some cases uh, or some statutes that we would like to have had amended or be introduced last year, so we're looking to bring those forward. Um, we're always going to be talking about equal pay. It's yeah. so important to talk about equal pay, and if you think about that, that's even important to what we're talking about for, the, for this case is empowering women because right now you have a 27% pay gap in the state of Mississippi for women. You've got at least 78,000 heads of households that are headed by women that, that live below the poverty line. So we have to really have that conversation. That's going to help us from an economy, uh, from a workplace, uh, in upskilling our workforce. So that, that certainly will be key uh, as we look at a number of other issues that are important to um, how we protect people in the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, so that's on the on the table now. I got to ask you about the medical marijuana program because that's obviously one of the the most hotly contested matters in our legislature. <laughs> what would this mean to the attorney general's office? So should we get a program passed? What does it look like right now? Well, we'll certainly be looking at how the laws are set up. You know, we um, will be moving forward to, uh, you know, any way that we can help as we look over any assistance that we might provide as it's percolating through, be it a special session or the regular session, uh, to make sure that all the laws are in compliance uh, and that all the, the, the different areas are met because, as you said, it's been a very hotly contested Yeah. Um, Yep. program and, and going through the initiative process. Right. 
-hmm. We'll see where all that goes. Uh, what about the uh, vaccination mandates? If you, if you, has your office got any role in that? We got just about 30 seconds left here. But Yeah, absolutely. You know, from the Republican AG side, we have already filed 34 lawsuits against that. the Biden administration, yeah. written 18 letters. We just wrote another letter and said this 100-person overreach it's, is it's unacceptable. Not so, on the private sector. That's just wrong. Right. You'll, you'll consider content, continue to see me go after the Biden administration with my colleagues. Attorney General Lynn Fitch has been our guest. We're at the Mississippi Veterans Affairs Clay Shoot, Providence Hill Farm. Stay with us, Middays. We'll